today we are going to discuss about Volhard's method, which comes under the precipitation titration. We employ this Volhard's method to determine the constituent of an unknown analyte in a given sample of solution. The main principle is the formation of precipitation in the precipitation titration, and we uh, use this method to determine the chlorine, bromine, and iodine usually for Volhard's method. So our main objective is to discuss the principle, the procedure and the things that we are needing in this whole experiment. So first start with our solvent. So we have our solvent to be water as it is a aqueous, aqueous titration. So we have our solvent to be water and our analyte is here in ACL. We are using chlorine for the example. And we have titrant as the ammonium thiocyanate or we can use also potassium thiocyanate. In our indicator, we have the ferric nitrate or we can also use ferric ammonium sulfate. So if we go to the procedure, we may face three main procedures that we are going to interact. The first one is we have to use excess AgN3 and mix it with NaCl solution. So the excess AgN3 is mixed with NaCl solution. So this NaCl solution, so AgN3 mixes up with NaCl and forms AgCl and NaNO3 as our byproduct. So the AgCl forms precipitates down as it becomes insoluble. So this AgCl forms the precipitate after the mixing of excess amount of AgNO3 with NaCl. So the AgNO3 is excess. Remember, we have still left with many AgNO3. In this diagram, we have also drawn the precipitate AgCl with the black dots at the bottom. So the, this black dots represent the AgCl precipitate down of, the, of this conical flask. And we have excess amount of AgN3 which left unreacted. These are denoted by this red color. So this red color determines the excess amount of AgCl, sorry, AgNO3 that is still remaining above the AgCl precipitate. So what we are going to do in the next procedure that is the excess amount of AgNO3 that is left over the AgCl precipitate is reacted with the NH4Cn, NH4Cn. And this NH4Cn is denoted by this green color on the butyrate. So we, so we have NH4Cn on the, inside the butyrate and we can also use potassium thiocyanate instead of this ammonium thiocyanate. So we are using ammonium thiocyanate here, NH4Cn. And we also have our indicator inside the conical flask, that is the ferric nitrate, FeNO3 whole thrice. So now we are going to do the titration with using the ferric nitrate uh, as our indicator. So what happens is that when we mix up the NH4Cn, that, that when we open the buret, then the NH4CaCn, that is the uh, ammonium thiocyanate drips out and reacts with the AgNO3. So this silver nitrate was excess even after the reaction with NaCl in our first step because it was excess. So now it reacts with the NH4SCN to form AgSCN that is the silver thiocyanate. And we also have our byproduct that is the NH4NO3. So this NH4NO3 is our byproduct. But this reaction is also done with mercury. So mercury is also employed to achieve this same reaction, but in a different kind of way. So I have gathered this and I'm, to I'm going to show you that mercury is also used. So mercury is also used uh, for the titration against the NH4-SCN. So what we yield uh, after this, that you see, when AgNO3 whole twice reacts with NH4-SCN, it forms AgSCN whole twice. So as I've shown, it can be also done with the help of mercury. So now we may proceed to our third step. So the third steps includes the final steps. That is the when the AgNO3 
with the agent NO3 is completely reacted because we have AgNO3 in less amount than the NH4HCN. So the AgNO3 after reaction with the NH4HCN gets exhausted but still there is left Ag NH4HCN after the formation of AgHCN. The NH4HCN is still in the beaker and even and when we drop some of its last drops when we drip out the last drop it reacts with the uh, it reacts with the indicator so the last amount of NH4HCN reacts with the indicator because it reacts with the indicator because there is no more AgNO3 left because all of the AgNO3 is used to form the AgHCN but this indicator reacts with the last drop of NH4HCN so after the reaction of the NH4HCN and AgNO3 in our last drop it forms the ferric thiocyanate after the reaction with that ferric salt indicator and which gives us a red color so this red color determines the end point because now at the at this point we, there is no AgNO3 left so this, so this determines we should stop our titration and determine the value in the buret so this AgNO3 which was taken in the beginning let's take it as XML so the XML was the initial amount of AgNO3 taken remember that we are using it in the last calculation so now gets to the reaction with the indicator that when the indicator that we are using here is the ferric nitrate that is the FeNO3 whole thrice reacts with NH4HCN it was the last drop of NH4HCN after all the AgNO3 reacted and formed AgHCN so it forms FeHCN whole thrice after reaction after reaction with the NH4HCN so this last drop of NH4HCN as we are familiar with most of, most of the titration cases so this gives our end point giving the red color and we also have our byproduct to be NH4, uh, NH4NO3 if we balance the reaction then what happens let me see wait uh, so we have 3 3 okay okay our uh, balancing is done so this was a reaction which was happening after the uh, dripping out of the last drop of NH4HCN from the buret and forming this FeHCN whole trace this gives the red color and when we see the red color we can be, be sure that all the AgNO3 has converted to AgHCN and we have to stop right now that is our end point so all of the AgNO3 is converted to AgHCN so now if we look at the buret we can determine a value so this value in the buret determines the amount of NH4CN equivalent which was used to create AgHCN reacting with AgNO3 so this value in the buret that is the amount of NH4CN was reacted with AgNO3 gives us the amount of AgNO3 converted to AgHCN so let's take it as YML so this amount of AgNO3 is uh, converted to AgHCN by the reaction of NH4HCN so we have our final uh, so we have our initial value that is the XML that we used in the beginning that is it is the total amount of AgNO3 that we started with and we also have the amount of AgNO3 that reacted with the NH4HCN so if we subtract it from that value we will get the amount of AgNO3 that is uh, forming the AgCl after the reaction with NH NaCl so this amount of AgNO3 is used to react with the equivalent amount of NaCl and from this value we can determine the amount of chlorine in the solution so amount of chlorine can be determined and it can uh, get our unknown analyte concentration so NaCl is our unknown analyte in this reaction so now we can see that this is the way how we can determine our unknown analyte so let's look on to some facts so the facts that I, that I have discussed is that so we use nitrobenzene because nitrobenzene helps to prevent the interaction of the AgCl precipitate formed in the first reaction with the 
precipitate formed in the last reaction that is the uh, ferric uh, thiocyanate that is the FeSCN whole thrice. So this prevention of this both precipitate helps to avoid the filtration procedure. So we also use dilute nitric acid to make the medium uh, of our solution acidic because in neutral medium the ferric salt that is our indicator would undergo hydrolysis. So now if you look from the beginning we have excess amount of AgNO3 which reacted with NaCl to form AgCl precipitate. So after this still there is AgNO3 left. So this AgNO3 was reacted with a huge amount of NH4-HCN and formed AgHCN that is silver thiocyanate. So now the whole uh, AgNO3 that was left unreacted is used to prepare the AgHCN and there is also the ferric nitrate as our indicator. So this ferric nitrate gives the red color with the last drop of NH4-HCN as the, all the AgNO3 is completely exhausted. So this AgCN equivalent in the burette now there is this amount gives the amount of AgNO3 reacted with it. So we get the YML of AgNO3 that reacted and we also have the XML in the beginning that we have used. So this uh, total value if we subtract gives the amount of AgNO3 that is used to react with the NaCl. So thank you. So I hope you like this video. So please give a like and do share this video with your friends and do subscribe my channel. Bye.